டூ நியூஸ் அனலைசிஸ் ஃபார் த டேட் ஆகஸ்ட் ட்வெண்ட்டி த்ரீ ட்வெண்ட்டி ட்வெண்ட்டி த்ரீ ஹியர் வீக் கோ த்ரூ இட் நவ் கெட் இன் டு த டிஸ்கஷன் லுக் அட் திஸ் ஆர்டிகல்ஸ் இஸ்டே ஹவ் இந்தியன் கவர்மெண்ட் ரிலீஸ்ட் இட்ஸ் ஓன் கார் கிராஷ் டெஸ்டிங் ப்ரோக்ராம் நேம்டு பாரத் என்சிஏபி ஸோ ஃப்ரம் அக்டோபர் ஒன் மை கார் மேனுஃபேக்சரர்ஸ் கேன் வாலண்டியர் டு கெட் இன் டு தேர் மாடல் டெஸ்டட் அண்டர் பாரத் இன் கேப் அண்ட் கெட் அ ஸ்டார் ரேட்டிங் இண்டிகேட்டிங் தேர் சேஃப்டி ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் த கிரக்ஸ் ஆஃப் த ஆர்டிகல் கிவன் ஹியர் இன் திஸ் கண்டெக்ஸ் லெட் அஸ் சி அபவுட் பாரத் என்சிஏபி இன் டீடைல் என்சிஏபி இன் டீடைல் இஸ் அ ஷார்ட் ஃபார்ம் ஆஃப் பாரத் நியூ கார் அசஸ்மெண்ட் ப்ரோக்ராம் இட் இஸ் அ நியூ கார் அசஸ் சேஃப்டி அசஸ்மெண்ட் ப்ரோக்ராம் விச் ப்ரப்போஸ் இஸ் அ மெக்கானிசம் ஆஃப் அவாய்டிங் த ஸ்டார் ரேட்டிங் டு ஆட்டோமொபைல்ஸ் பேஸ்ட் ஆன் தேர் பெர்ஃபார்மன்ஸ் இன் கிராஷ் டெஸ்ட் அண்ட் த ப்ரோக்ராம் இஸ் மாடல்டு பை டுவர்ட்ஸ் அ ஜீரோ ஃபவுண்டேஷன் அண்ட் திஸ் பாரத் இன் கேப் இஸ் சிமிலர் டு குளோபல் என்சிஏபி ஸோ பாரத் என்சிஏபி a standard is aligned with the global benchmark and the program is about avoiding star rating to the automobiles based on their performance in crash test and the bharat ncap assessment will allocate the star rating from 1 to 5 uh, currently the program will be applicable to the passenger vehicles with a maximum passenger uh, maximum of 8 seats and the testing protocol was named as automotive industry standard 197 and it will be published soon Mm, uh, soon uh, now coming into the testing procedure see an original equipment manufacturer must nominate a vehicle for testing the following this representatives from bharat ncap will visit the manufacturing facility or a uh, dealer outlet to select the base variant of the model through a random sampling and send it to the testing center in the coordination with cert uh, here cert is an central institute of road transport three parameters will be evaluated in testing it includes adult occupant protection child occupant protection and uh, safety assistant technology present in the car based upon the evaluation a rating between 1 to 5 star will be assigned to the vehicle following this uh, the result uh, the test result will be approved by bharat ncap standing committee and it will be published on their website and the central institute of road transport will issue the final certificate so this is how the testing mechanism actually works see this is new mechanism uh, is very significant because india has the second highest number of road accidents after us and we have the highest number of road deaths uh, with 1.5 lakh deaths per year the fact is that these fatalities are taking place at lower speed uh, other compared to the countries so india is currently in desperate need for quality automobiles that can save the human life even if the accidents occur in that uh, life board ncap is a good initiative a star rating of indian cars based on the crash test will not only ensure the structural and passenger safety in cars but also increase the uh, export worthiness of the indian automobiles this will help in making automobile industry self reliant self reliant with the mission of making india india number 1 automobile hub in the world despite all the significance there are some challenges for the example setting up of set testing facilities requires huge budgetary support and huge infrastructural development major cities in india have hardly 6 to 10 percentage of their total land allocation to the construction of transport infrastructure so this is, this has led to inadequate transport infrastructure infrastructure in cities with reference to population and uh, and its requirement in the conclusion the testing protocol should be aligned with global st- crash test protocols allowing the original equipments manufacturers and from india to get their vehicle tested at india's own in house testing facilities so this is all about this discussion we have seen important points about bharat ncap the distinct procedures and the significance of the bharat ncap uh, now uh, let us move on to the next part of the discussion uh, look at this editorial article um, it is written by uh, mr pdt achari uh, who is the former secretary general of lok sabha he has t- highlighted the issue with lilly thomas judgment and also present some arguments to restore the section 8 class 4 of the representations of people act 1951 this is the overall essence of the article in our discussion uh, today let us uh, cover important points mentioned in the uh, article before that syllabus is highlighted here Uh, for your reference now to understand the editorial better we must uh, for 
ஃபஸ்ட்டு ப்ரஷ் ஆஃப் த பேசிக்ஸ் லெட் அஸ் ஸ்டார்ட் வித் செக்ஷன் எயிட் ஆஃப் ரெப்ரஸன்டேஷன் ஆஃப் பீப்பிள் ஆக்ட் ஆஃப் நைன்டீன் ஃபிஃப்டி ஒன் செக்ஷன் எயிட் ஆஃப் ரெப்ரஸன்டேஷன் ஆஃப் பீப்பிள் ஆக்ட் ஆஃப் நைன்டீன் ஃபிஃப்டி ஒன் ப்ரொவைட்ஸ் ஃபார் த வேரியஸ் அஃபென்சஸ் அ கன்விக்ஷன் ஆன் விச் will result in the disqualification of legislators so the editorial uh, here focuses on the section 8 of the class 3 and section 8 class 4 and uh, of the representation of people act 1951 here i have displayed the exact text of the section 8 of the representation of people act 1951 so basically what the section 8 of class 3 says that if a legislator is uh, convicted of a um, offenses of offenses and face imprisonment for more than 2 years then the legislature shall be disqualified further it to say it says that some uh, disqualified further it also says that uh, same legislator will be barred from contesting elections for 6 years after uh, after his release from prison so this is about section 8 class 3 now moving on into the section uh, 8 class 4 of the act so this the section is uh, the section says that disqualification of mp or mla does not take uh, place immediately uh, after the conviction instead the section provides 3 for 3 months 3 months um, grace period during which disqualification does not apply during this 3 months when an appeal is admitted the disqualification would depend upon the final outcome of the appeal let us understand the concept with an example uh, let us say um, person is a, a is a mla unfortunately person a is convicted of serious crime and is sentenced to 2 year of imprisonment so according to the section 8 class 4 since he is already a member member of legislature the rule about disqualification won't be applied immediately But upon his conviction uh, instead uh, it will only come into effect after 3 months from the date of his conviction if a person is decided to appeal uh, the conviction within these uh, those 3 months the disqualification will come into effect uh, only when the court becomes a decision makes a decision about his appeal so this rule allows the elected representatives some uh, some time to challenge the conviction before they are disqualified from their position uh, so see this conviction was struck down by supreme court in lilly thomas judgment in lilly thomas versus union of india case in 2013 supreme court said that uh yeah um, mps mlas mlcs uh, a number of legislative councils if they are convicted of a crime and uh, given a minimum of 2 years imprisonment they will lose their membership of the house with immediate effect the supreme court mentioned that article 102 and the article 191 of the constitution does not create any differences between the elected representatives and the candidate contesting for uh, election uh, contesting in the election with respect to disqualification here note that article 102 with uh, disqualification of mps and article 191 deals with the disqualification of mlas so uh, supreme court through lilly thomas uh, richmond uh, tried to bring parity between the ca- candidates for contesting the election and sitting members let me explain this is with and uh, this with another example this example happens before lilly thomas case see here are two persons a and b they are contesting in elections now they are accused in different cases right uh, the uh, court provides a judgment for a person um, a um, before the election and declares that is uh, he is a convict so this is results in a disqualification of a person from con- contesting in election now the person b who is accused in a case contest in the election process and wins the per, wins the person becomes a legislator but after the election of the election the court provides a judgment that a person b is convicted here the person b is not immediately disqualified he is provided with a 3 month uh, grace period under section 8 of the representation of people act so in that period if the play, person b j- just files an appeal then he will not be disqualified by looking at this example you can see there is a clear disparity between a candidate contesting for election and sitting legislator to remove this disparity only in lilly thomas case judgment um, supreme court struck down the section 8 class 4 of the representation of 
people act 1951 so we have covered the basics of the case now let us see the arguments presented by author uh, author of the editorial the first argument is regarding the section 8 class 3 of the representation of people act and article 103 of the constitution if you notice the text of the class section 8 class 3 of the representation of people act carefully it has the word shall be disqualified here since the word shall be disqualified is used it uh, does not mean instantaneous disqualification only if the word like uh, shall stand it it is qualified is used it means uh, instantaneous disqualification so sec section 8 class 3 of the act only uses the word uh, shall be disqualified it means that after the code convicts uh, legislature and pr provides a present sentence of more than two years then the pa particular legislature shall be disqualified by some authority now who is that authority mm, secretary general of parliament our uh, secretary general of state legislature and uh, cannot be granted such power this is because the constitution does not have any provision that provides such power to secretary general of parliament or secretary general of state legislature the author says that this authority could be provided to the president under the article 103 of the constitution now look at the article 103 it says that if an issue or a question arises in regard to disqualification of the member of the parliament then that issue will be referred to the president and the president can give his final decision it also says that if the president is giving his decision he must consult with the election commission and the president must act according to the opinion shared by election commission the author also refers to the consumer education and research society versus union of india case uh, in 2009 in this case supreme court mentioned that even if the legislature is convicted by a court and provided a sentence of more than convicted by the court and provides a sentence of more than two years the particular legislature legislator shall be disqualified only after it is referred to the president this is the first argument provided by the author against the uh, really Lee thomas uh, judgment and the author is also says that there must be some exception provided for sitting members of the legislature uh, he says that if an mp or a mla is immediately disqualified according to Lee thomas judgment uh, Lily Thomas judgment then it will results in the uh, results in some issues uh, the uh, first issue is that sudden disqualification will results in lot of uh, confusions and if the convicted person is disqualified and a new person elected from the constituency after some time the convicted person proves his innocence through an appeal in higher court so to address the situation like this only section 8 class 4 of representation of people act has provi was provided but this section was struck down by lily thomas judgment secondly in the case of sudden disqualification the people of constituency will lose their representative finally uh, the constitution itself provides some exemption exception to the sitting members of the legislature under article 103 so striking down the section 8 class 4 of uh, is not a valid so these are the issues as in lily thomas judgment highlighted by the author lastly the author feels that lily thomas case judgment hasn't led to any noticeable change the politicians from ruling party have been able to delay their conviction with within few hours but the politicians from opposition party like uh, Mr. Rahul Gandhi had to wait for four months to overturn the disqualification. So the author says that Section 8 should be brought back unconstitutionally. Protected this is necessary to safeguard the careers of the Indian lawmakers from sudden disruptions caused by the court decisions. So this is all about this discussion. We have an important point about Lily Thomas uh, case issues in the case and the important arguments mentioned in the editorial. So this is very important topic for mains examination. Don't miss it now. Let us move on into the next part of our discussion. Take a look at the article. See few days back Madras High Court has taken up a Suomoto uh, revision against um, revision against the discharge of state education ministers from disproportionate asset a case 
following this is uh, this is the code has also taken up uh, up so motto revision against discharge of revenue ministers and finance ministers who are acquitted from disproportionate assets case so this is a perfect example of judicial activism so in this discussion we shall see important uh, points about judicial activism first what is judicial activism judicial activism denotes the proactive role of uh, role um, played by a judiciary in protection of rights of the citizen and in the promotion of justice in the society in other words it implies the assertive role played by judiciary to force uh, other two organs of the government to discharge their constitutional duties for example in visakha was a state of was a state of rajasthan case 1997 the judiciary has stepped out of its duties and laid down the guidelines to protect the women from sexual harassment at workplace actually this is a function of the government but in this case the judiciary has taken up this function uh, to restore the rights of the affected person so this is the example of judicial activism the practice of judicial activism first originated and developed in usa in india the doctrine of judicial activism was introduced in uh, mid 1970s remember the concept of judicial activism is inherent in judicial review itself so in india if a law is found to be inconsistent with the provision of the constitution the supreme court and the high court have power to examine the constitutionality of the law and can declare the law as unconstitutional so we can say that judicial activism is a form of uh, judicial review in which uh, judges participate in law making policies the concept of judicial activism is also closely related to the concept of public interest litigation this is um, all the uh, pal actually uh, created by judicial activism of the supreme court uh, this means that pal is the outcome of judicial activism now we shall see what are the issues is associated with the judicial activism see the uh, judicial activism has led to many controversies in regard to supreme court between uh, supremacy between the parliament and uh, supreme court and it can also disturb the principles of separation of power which is one of the basic structure of the constitution another important issue is overstepping of the constitutional boundaries by judiciary critics argue that the courts have overstepped their constitutional boundaries and encroached into the functions of the government and legislation they condemn the that court should refrain from making policy judgments and instead devote itself to the interpreting the law next important issue is the lack of expertise critics so uh, argue that um, judges often lack the expertise to make decision on complex policy issues as, and the next issue is to is da- is damage to democratic institutional uh, ju- uh, institutions judicial activism can also damage democratic institutions when the court take on the policy policy making uh, role in it can undermine the uh, authority of elected bra- branches of the government and this can leads to a loss of public trust in these institutions and a decline in democratic participation and despite these concerns they, there are uh, also some benefits of judicial activism for example it can protect the rights of the people and check the excesses of the other branches of the government it can also help to bring about the social change and to address the important issues as that may not otherwise addressed by the political process in simple words the judicial activism is required to protect the right of the individuals and to promote the social justice and also to ensure the government accountability so this is all about the judicial activism now we can move to the next part of the discussion um this is uh, this article talks about inflation in india according to this article cpa headline cpi headline inflation was 7.44 percentage in july this is above 6 percentage target set by rbi but you have to note here that cpi core inflation which excludes the food and fuel prices was only 4.9 percentage and this shows that high inflation that india is experiencing currently is due to the food and fuel prices only according to this article the finance ministry has mentioned that mentioned some reasons for uh, for current uh, high food inflation in india the first reason is that termination of black sea grain initiative this has resulted in the disrupted supply of wheat and sunflower oil to the india this has also increased the prices of wheat and the edible oil and the second reason is wild fly disease and monsoon so this has affected uh, the domestic production of tomato thereby resulting in the major spike in the tomato prices finally 
India also witnessed a uh, deficient to our uh, dal tur da dal production this year has also caused a spike in the dal prices so these are the reasons why india is currently witnessing the high food uh, inflation uh, so this is about the news article in our discussion today we all we will uh, uh, cover basic in about inflation first uh, what is inflation inflation as we all know nothing but a general increase in the price level inflation can occur when there is a high demand in economy or it can occur when there is a less supply in the economy based on the causes of inflation inflation can be classified into two types they are demand pull inflation inflation and cost push inflation first demand pull inflation occur when there is a money supply in the economy increases simply put demand pull inflation uh, occurs when there are money chases less more money chases less product and increase in house rent due to increase in disposable income is an example of demand demand pull inflation on other hand cost to push inflation is due to supplier side constraints if you can remember recently the prices of uh, graphic cuts and the processes uh, increased due to silicon shortage this is an example of cost push inflation in addition to this inflation can also le- uh, also be classified into creeping inflation walking inflation running inflation and hyperinflation so based on the rates of inflation now what can be done to control inflation inflation can be controlled either by rpi using monetary policy or by government using fiscal policy first let us take up the monetary policy in case of monetary policy uh, in case of monetary policy rbi uses the tools like report crr um, cslr and um, open market operations and credit control policies to control the money supply in the economy now let us understand the working of the monetary policy with example let us say there is a high inflation in india due to excessive money supply in such times the rbi can raise the repo, repo rate and uh, so when the repo rate is higher the commercial banks are less likely to borrow from rbi as a result commercial banks might more cautious in extending the loans to the businesses and individuals when the businesses and the individuals receive lesser amount of loans they won't make a new investment and they will control their expenditure so this automatically reduces the money supply in the economy when the money supply comes down the inflation will also comes down so this is how rbi uses the monetary policy to control inflation now let us see the fiscal policy in fiscal policy the government either expands the expense or contracts its expenditure or increases or decreases its tax rates in order to control the money supply in economy for example let us assume the inflation in india is due to increased consumer spending and demand now the government can control the inflation by postponing the pay commission or by cancelling some planned infrastructure projects this results in increased money supply in economy as the money supply decreases the demand in- decreases and the inflation also decreases so this is how the fiscal policy works now we shall see the impact of inflation on various sections of economy uh first consumer inflation can erode the purchasing power of the consumers making it more difficult for them to afford the goods and services this can uh, lower the living standard of the consumer next is the business inflation can increase the cost of doing business such as wages uh, raw materials and energy this can leads to lower lower profit and job losses next investors inflations can reduce the value of investment such as stocks and bonds so this leads to lower returns and discourage uh, investment inflation can increase the government's debt to burden as it uh, has to pay more for its earlier debt this can lead to higher taxes or reduced government spending so if you see the government economy as a whole inflation can slow the economic growth and um, leads to higher unemployment and lower stand, living standards so this is all about this topic now moving on into the next part of the discussion take a look at this article according to the article national human rights commission has issued a notice to the dgp of the haryana the district ma- and district magistrate to submit a detailed report on incident happened in haryana what happened is a hindu family has served as anti rohingya post on uh, share shared the anti rohingya post on social media but they live in a muslim dominated village for this matter the family has been attacked th- threatened for life in order to leave the village nrc 
NHRC says that this incident is a violation of basic fundamental rights and seeks explanation from the authority. So the crux of the article now, we shall quickly go through the important points about an uh, National Human Rights Commission in prelims perspective. See, National Human Rights Commission of India was established on October 12, 1993 under the Protection of Human Rights Act of 1993. So it is a statutory body and not a constitutional body. It is a headquartered in uh, New Delhi and know that it uh, in 1993 through United Nation General Assembly in Paris adopted a resolution regarding the principles of uh, human rights and these principles came to known as Paris principles and the NHRC um, was established in India in conformity with this Paris principle. So basically NHRC works for promotion and protection of human rights. Now let us see the composition of National Human Rights Commission. Currently National Human Rights Commission is a multi-member body consisting of a chairman and five member. The chairperson should be retired Chief Justice of India or a judge of the Supreme Court regarding the five member. One member should be retired or serving judge of the Supreme Court and uh, one member should be a retired a serving judge of his high court and the other three members should be among the persons having practical experience in human rights issues as well. Important thing is note here is that out of three members at least one person should be a woman and in addition to this five member uh, are uh, there are seven deemed members who are chairpersons of various national commissions like National Commission for Scheduled Caste, National Commission for Scheduled Tribes, National Commission for Women, National Commission for Minorities, National Commission for Backward Classes, National Commission for uh, Protection of Child Rights and Chief uh, Commissioner of uh, Persons with Disabilities. So these are the seven national commissions and their chair persons of the um, uh, nation, South Southern National uh, Commission act as a deemed member of the Na National Human Rights Commission. So in the total commission has one chairman and five full time members and seven deemed members and the chairperson and the members are appointed by the presidents based on the recommendation of the committee. This committee has six members and the Prime Minister, Speaker of Lok Sabha, Home Minister and the Leader of Opposition in Lok Sabha, Leader of Opposition in Raj Sabha and the Deputy Chairman of the Raj Sabha. So based on the recommendations of this six member committee the president appoint a chairperson and other members of the national human rights commission now regarding the term of members of the chairperson or members of national human rights commission holds an office for a term of three years or until they obtain the age of 70 years 70 years they are eligible for reappointment as a chairperson or member of national human rights commission but note that chairperson is not eligible for further employment under indian government or state government now coming to the removal process chairperson of national human rights commission can be removed from the office in accordance with the provisions of the protection of human rights act 1993 in order to remove the human rights person from national human rights commission first year motion of removal should be moved in the Lok Sabha or Raj Sabha by a minimum of 100 members and the motion must be accompanied by a statement for the ground of removal after considering the motion if the parliament passes the resolution by simple majority then the chairperson of national human rights commission shall be removed from the office and the chairperson can also removed from office by the president office uh, by president on the uh, office by president on the grounds of crude misbehavior uh, or uh, incapacity in such case the president must refer the matter to the supreme court for an inquiry if the supreme court after an inquiry reports uh, that chairperson has been guilty of the crude misbehavior or incapacity the president may remove the chairperson from office remember the salaries allowances and other services conditions of the national human rights commission are determined by the central government so this this is all about national human rights commission now let us moving on into the next part of the discussion we have come to the prelims practice questions discussion now look at the first question it is about bharat ncap we have to find how many statements are correct and the statements one and three are correct as bharat ncap cars will be crash tested and given points which uh, translate into stars third statement says implementing bharat nc AP will bring India at par with other part of the world like US and so this statement is also correct. Look at the second statement. Bharat NCAP is only voluntary and not mandatory. So the sta statement 2 is incorrect. So the uh, answer option is B only. Uh, two. 
now look at the second question um, what is the fundamental characteristic and distinguishes judicial activism from judicial restraint here we have to understand the judicial uh, activism is a proactive uh, role of the judiciary in public policy of judicial restraint is a limited uh, role of judiciary in the public policies so the so the correct answer is option b extent of involvement in policy making so this is the quiz question for today post today you post your answers in the comment section this is the main question for uh, today try to write an answer in the uh, comment section uh, with, uh, we have to come we have come to the end of this uh, discussion if you have the if you like the video please share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel thank you for thank you for watching have a nice day